Welcome to this brand new show by Out the Bar Podcast. We are at World of Beer UCF, and this new show is now going to be called Behind the Bar, which we're going to talk about craft beer and nothing but craft beer. And co-hosting with me today is not Taco, but another co-host, Jeff, who is the general manager of WAB UCF. Hey, everybody. How are you? And we have a special guest today for our inaugural first episode. We have David. Hey, how's it going, guys? From uh, Orlando's Craft Beer Enthusiast. So, let's get started. What is Orlando Craft Beer Enthousi- Enthusiast? Um, Orlando Craft Beer Enthusiast is a uh, group of people that meet on a pretty decent, regular basis and share out their collection of collected beer throughout their time of travel, trading, what have it, and we all come together and crack them open and, and just have a measuring contest to see who's who's got the best beer. Now, how, how long have you been doing such a such a show? Uh, since February of this year. So, so you're brand new. Yeah, brand only new. a couple months. Good. Now, how is, how is it kind of turning out? It started out uh, with about four or five people, and we progressively got bigger and bigger as the shares went on. And um, it's, just, it's just one of those things that the word kind of gets out there. Some people have friends. They know somebody. And... Every now and again, we'll be having a share, and somebody will look across the bar and wonder what we're doing, Mm -hmm. come over and talk to us, and it just kind of works its way from there. Cool. Now, how'd you get started in the the beer show trading? And Uh, My older brother works for a major distributor in Central Florida, and kind of got us all started in craft beer. And from there, it just kind of took on a world of its own. Um, I started going to World of Beer back in 2011, and I just started pounding beers down and try to work my way around the world. And um, I'm I'm here today to go out and say I'm at a thousand beers at World of Beer. Congratulations! And a little more than that. I, well, yeah, <laughs> we're almost at 1,100. But um, just kind of grew from there. And as the taste for beer continued to change and tried all the different variations, right. then it, this desire became let's get some quality and let's find the rare stuff out there and let's get our hands on it. Cool. Yeah, th- that I think is a dying breed in terms of craft beer, like getting the quality, because mm-hmm. so many craft breweries now are just producing to meet demand. Instead of doing like smaller batches, you know, one-off stuff like that, they're just pumping it out just to meet demand. Yeah, and, and that's that's definitely a big concern of ours, and uh, that's why we we do this. And um, no knock on world of world of beer, but you know, they, they have to appeal to the masses. And yeah, a lot absolutely. of the beers that sit up there on the shelf, they, they fly off the shelf, but they are very very common, uh, mass produced, and uh, but they also do get the limited and rare beers. And trust me, we're here, and we we try to buy every bottle we can before we leave. So. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's absolutely it's been a thing for us at least uh, since I've been involved for the last two years with World of Beer. Um, it's been a thing for us to kind of see that that market change and to see how every brewery now is releasing every you know every single style in some degree. Um, and you know, you get that you get that watered down craft market now, where you, everybody has an IPA, everybody yeah. has a West Coast IPA. Um, and, and it makes it that much harder to get quality, but that's why what we do with World of Beer is kind of, uh, you know, a pretty awesome thing for the craft beer world where you can have somebody like David a few years ago when he got into craft beer and he started coming to World of Beer mm-hmm. where he got to experience a thousand different beers. And like he said, travel, you know, travel the world of beer and come in and try everything. And you find things that you didn't know existed. Find You're yourself. trying styles that, that you had no idea existed. Yeah. And then, you know, you take it to that next level and you start finding some real rare quality from all over the country and all over the world yeah. and, and start trying some really awesome stuff. So that's, I mean, he's been doing the bottle shares with us at our location now every other Thursday for what, uh, uh, three months or so? About three or four months. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's super interesting when you get to see them all trying their beers and when you get to try a few yourself and, and really participate. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, It's really fun, but it's really cool to see kind of what, craft beer has become and how big it is and, and try some of the whales out there and, and see what they're really like you know so it's, yeah. it's been a great opportunity for us to uh, partner with somebody who's been very active Absolutely. in the craft beer yeah. world and then also kind of bring what we do to the masses but also elevate ourselves to that level as well yeah i feel, I feel like craft beer now is a, is a sleeping giant that people are aware that it exists but they're, they don't fully comprehend how big it really is yeah. and like what you do really brings, you know, me and Jeff kind of like that intro to like, oh, this is a beer we never heard of. And like you would say, hey, have a little sample. And then we would try that and gain knowledge and, and share that knowledge with other people to where the industry grows, not necessarily in terms of profit and money, but in terms of word of mouth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the the limited beers that, that get produced, um, they have hype behind them. And 
Um, it's a small, it, the, the group is, is growing, but it's still a relatively small group. And, and I think we represent probably 5% of the marketplace in terms of, of sales, um, especially here like at World of Beer. But um, the, the way that, it, the way that it's, it's growing and the awareness of it and the people that we're seeing in line, uh, Funky Buddha had an event um, not even a month ago and there was, right. there was 750 people in line for a 500 bottle release. So I just, it's, it's growing and, and it's getting out there and people are, they desire the, the, right. the quality. I mean, Cigar City with Hunapu, same thing. Yeah, 2,000 people yeah. for an event. The event sold out in a matter of 10 minutes. Yeah, total. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Just for a bottle of... Beer. Four bottles. Yeah, four bottles. <laughs> four. <laughs> 200 and then you sell an eBay. Highest, highest rated chocolate stout in the world, though, right? $200 yeah. for a ticket. Obviously, you get, a, you get a festival out of that, but right. you walk away with four bottles of beer, and people have no problem paying it. Yeah, and they resell it, too. <laughs> yeah, they do which that, another <laughs> Which yeah. we, really, we really look down upon um, yeah. ourselves. We believe that craft beer shouldn't be um, purchased and sold for, profit. you know, for, yeah, profit. Yeah. But, I mean, people sell them for $200, and, and it's just, it's a little bit ridiculous. I think the major thing that we try to do is we try to bring those bottles in and we share them with friends. And it's like you worked really hard to get that, and you just want to share it with your friend. That's yeah. all you want to do. You yeah. want well, them to taste it. I want to yeah. taste it. We all enjoy it. And, and that's that's what you know yeah. we get and that's back one to. of the, that's really one of the cool things about the trading which I know you're into trading as well where it's you know yes we're lucky that we're down here in Florida and we get to experience Hunapu but how many events regionally are we missing by being in Florida oh, you know 99% so it's cool when you can get a beer like that and you get four beers and rather than sell them for profit to experience that beer to, to give that to somebody in a different state yep. and trade it out for something that Absolutely. that you know you might not be able to get regionally mm -hmm. um, yeah. it's really cool and it, it, it's something i'm trying to get into and i want to um but as that happens more that that enthusiast level of of beer is gonna just continue to grow and grow because it's it's really just interesting and it's it's a great way to experience things that you can't get where you're at right. and you don't even know exist until you start trading and you start talking to people in different states and different countries and and really get to experience what sure. they have to offer as well yeah so going off what jeff said uh, you know, you, you trade and you, you mail mail beer and, and trade and stuff like that, right? So someone like Jeff or myself or anyone, anyone else who's looking to get into that, kind of like what kind of tips or like the process of trading beer do you go through? Um, the way that it works, uh, first off, I don't recommend anybody do anything to do with beer trading um, unless it's in person. So you know the person that you're dealing with. And secondly, you should never ship beer. Nobody ever ships beer ever because it's against the law you should never ship beer that being said it's done on a regular basis <laughs> and everybody does it um the, the big thing is this is there's a couple of uh, tools and resources out there forums and sets and sites um some people use facebook uh there's a couple of closed groups there's beer advocate uh which is a forum based system and uh the beer exchange is another good one where you basically list your entire seller and just random people will connect with you and send you yeah. Um, my recommendation would be if anybody is really, really interested and they really want to go down that avenue to take a hard look at what you have in your storage, uh, your beer cellar, you right. know, and uh, that doesn't mean that you have to have a uh, basement up in New England. You can actually have just a closet here in Florida and that'll be sufficient. Um, what you want to do is you want to get on those, uh, probably beer advocate would be your safest bet and take, take about a month and just read the forms and watch what people are doing and don't even respond or say anything. And get an understanding of what's going, what the value of certain beer is, because value might be in the eyes of the beholder. Correct, yeah. But there is also an unwritten, uh, unspoken value to the beer. So if I try to take a bottle of Hunapu and I try to trade it out for uh, a four-pack of Bourbon County brand stout, that'll get done, but I'm really losing out. And I could have taken my beer and probably got two, maybe three, four-packs of that same beer. Right. So you, you really don't know what the ratios are and you don't know what the value is. Um, so what you can kind of do is watch, gauge what's going on in the internet and on these uh, forums. Watch what people are doing. And then that way when you take that first step into it, you don't shoot yourself in the foot. You right. Know? That's a, I mean, that's a good tip to, to real understanding value if you're going to trade. Yeah. Now, um, what's on your mind, top of your head, what's the best beer that you've received in your opinion? Hard uh, question. Put me on the spot. I am man. putting you on the spot. Um, <laughs> the best beer that I've ever received, and uh, I've got Mike here with me. Uh, he's uh, also a co-founder of Craft Beer Enthusiast, uh, Orlando's Craft Beer Enthusiast, sorry. But uh, um, I would say I'd have to probably put Proprietor uh, by Bourbon County Proprietor Stout. I'd probably have to be up there as a 2013 and the 2014 bottle. 
and those two bottles when we had a bottle share one time. And by the way, we're going to be cracking one of those tonight. No big deal. Um, it literally killed it, and um, it, it, it just topped off an amazing night with just like it's a cherry on top. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the most you've ever sent out or traded? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> <knows>? so um, <laughs> was this the same deal? Uh, no. <laughs> so many. Um, going back to the the trading and stuff, and which will help me kind of answer that question. Um, I just a good recommendation for people in terms of just not only following, um, you know, following Beer Advocate and uh, my beer seller and some of the Facebook groups. You should um, you should negotiate and start dealing with somebody in another state that can get their hands on local offerings, that you get local offerings that just they don't make into distribution. Right. And build on that relationship. Uh-huh. And then what ends up happening is it doesn't matter if I have a Hunapu and you don't have something equal. Whenever you do get a chance to go to release, I know you're going to pay me back because you, you developed the back and forth relationship. That's right. kind of how I started. But um, because of that, I had five uh, boxes that just went out. Um, and a box consists of 12 bottles, typically. Um, in my in my language, that's right. what it is. Um, it's, I use wine shippers, and they had 12 spots, and I sent out a, um, five of these boxes to one to Maine, one to Massachusetts, one to New York, one over uh, two to Chicago. So okay. I had two different connections, and I sent out. You know, you're looking at five times uh, 12. We're looking at 60 beers right. that went out, and uh, they're all bombers, 25, 22 to Holy 25 cows. Miles. So, and then I got back, <laughs> and I'm still getting back the last couple of days. So that's probably the most I've ever sent out at one given time. Wow. Can you believe that? 60 bombers? I know. It's, it's and I got, I got 60 <laughs> but, bombers but back. The return, so, yeah, the right? return is fantastic, right? <laughs> yeah. You equal down so, on that one, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, going towards, you know, the Orlando Craft Beer Enthusiasts is, is the page you run? Yes, yeah. I actually run that page. Okay, so kind of tell us how – I know we could touch on earlier about how it's going, but kind of how – are you getting the word out? How are you? How is using social media to have to gain a crowd working for you? Okay, so it, it started off. Um, I was texting everybody, and I got tired of copying and pasting ten thousand mm-hmm. times over. Mm-hmm. And what happens when you put a large text message out? Nobody reads it, and that's what was happening. These shares were going onward and going onward, and people weren't following them. Right. So, I decided Facebook would probably be the best bet, and I mm-hmm. told everybody, hey. And I thought about the whole calendar system that they have on making an event, but I didn't want to tie it to World of Beer because I thought people might look at that and just say, World of Beer's having an event, and next thing you know, 50 college kids show up and they go, where's the beer, man? Right. So we used um, Facebook, and I didn't use the event on it, but I just post, basically post, hey, this is what we're doing, and I keep it solely to event-only stuff, no marketing, no advertising, solely to when we're holding our event and what's going on about two weeks in advance. Um, Facebook's got a couple cool features where um, since I have a page and it's not a group, um, if you follow something else that I follow as a page, there's probably a, a common interest there. Mm-hmm. And some of those people get a recommendation, hey, you, sh- you might like this page. Right. And we, uh, when I first opened a page, 10 people joined, which was oh, the, wow. the 10 people that we yeah, yeah. had, obviously just friends. Right. Um, and then within about two weeks, that page grew to 17. And it's at 37, which is a little more than I like. <laughs> because right, you want yeah. to try to keep it a closed group, but yeah. it's public. So yeah. it is what it is, and that's how we found some people, too. Some people send me messages and say, hey, I'm really interested in what you guys do, you're doing over there. Um, can I get in on your next bottle share? Right. So, And that just cool. that's how you grow, just uh, one person at a time. We're not looking to open up and have 10 people come flooding in. Right. We just want that one person, get to know them. I don't. It doesn't matter if you've got the biggest, baddest beer in the world. Mm-hmm. We want to get to know you, and just we want to feel like we're sharing it with like-minded people. You cool. know. Mm-hmm. Any, any questions on that, Jeff? No, I mean, I've been, uh, we've been working with David, I mean, well, we've known David since he started coming into World of Beer a few years ago. Um, we've been working with him on the bottle shares, like I said, for a few months, and it's just been uh, exactly like you said, it's growing organically. We don't want it to get too big mm-hmm. and start watering down what we're bringing in as far as quality beers. And it really becomes difficult to appreciate what you're drinking when you get more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's been it's been exciting. It's a really cool kind of thing that, that we're doing. And I know when we started talking about it, I was like, kind of blown away that we would even start doing something like that here and it's it's worked out in, incredibly well i really enjoy it um and i get to experience some really cool beers myself so it's it's been fun um when you when he asked you the question earlier about the best beer that you've got and i i thought about the dark lord from a couple weeks ago oh that the ancho chili ancho chili barrel oh. aged dark lord yeah <laughs> so yeah. amazing Mike, mike's over here shoving his finger down his throat because we've had a couple <laughs> bad experiences with dark lord the oh, regular really? base one so 
Yeah, but this one was a one was bourbon barrel aged bourbon with ancho, with ancho chilies. chilies. It was amazing. One of the one of the better beers I've ever had in my life. Yeah. So now was that was that like spicy or uh, it's well, that was right part kind of, of the spicy. <laughs> that was part of the spicy <laughs> bottle share. Yeah, have, you, have, you ever, have you ever had something that was hot, but it wasn't so overpowering hot that you couldn't enjoy it? It's just like a little back end kick, yeah. but it, and, and it ri- resides with you, but it doesn't make you have to drink a glass of water. It's, it's very hard to explain. That, that beer transformed like three different times from the second that you put it in your mouth. It's that mouth feel up front. It's very full. It's thick. It, it came out sweet. You had the barrel up front on the nose, everything, and then it just rounded out to this fantastic, yeah. like you said, zesty is almost the word I would use yeah, for it. But very good. Very, very good. It was spicy, but not over the top. I mean, some of those beers on that bottle share were very, very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Stone crime and punishment. So, oh my yeah. goodness. So that was uh, that was part of the, the chili uh, or the spicy uh, bottle theme. share. But that was, And that's some of the cool things they do with the bottle shares as well is, is they'll put some themes in there that are interesting. Um, uh, what were some of the good themes? I know you did a aged theme. You've done well, sours. Today, tonight, so two years old, sours, IPAs. Yeah. We've had open bottle shares okay. uh, where there's no set theme. But uh, I'm going to take that and run with it if you don't mind. Uh, that Go for it. The, we, we, um, we have a few requirements, and uh, I think I don't want to put too many rules on something because mm-hmm. I feel like that can kind of bog things down and, and deter people from wanting to join and, and take away that having a good time. But one, uh, a couple things that we do is everybody's limited to one bomber or two small bottles. We're looking for everybody to at least bring 22 ounces of the same exact beer um, and try not to go too much over that. And the goal of that is if you bring one bottle, I bring one bottle, Jeff brings one bottle, Mike brings one bottle, and we all share them, we all walked away just drinking one bottle. I, okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, so we're yeah, not yeah, we're yeah. not driving drunk at the end of the night, right. and we're hammered, and we just can't make sense of you know what's going on. Gotta be and responsible. Sp- <laughs> spread that out amongst over three hours. Yeah. And what you have is you have you have people that we're not here to get drunk. We're actually here to just enjoy the beer. We yeah. we really just want to take in the beer and enjoy what's going on. And um, if you if we just have some of the bottle shares that go on elsewhere, uh, nobody to be named. Um, they're just everybody throws in what they have, and everybody brings four or five beers, and people can't see straight, and then they also don't know what they're drinking. Yeah, and they don't they can't experience the beer fully. Right. right. Um, palate fatigue is a real thing, and uh, our goal is to make sure that you can actually pick up what we're trying to we're trying to do and then going in further we do uh theme shares mm-hmm. so we everybody who drinks the beer gets to vote and they all vote on who their top one top two and top three beers are right results are tallied uh first place gets 10 nine uh nine for second place and eight for third at the end of the night we tally them up the clear-cut first place winner is awarded a world of beer gift card they are awarded a um uh, a, a small handful of beers that we have in collection, and then the second place gets to pick the theme for the next bottle share. Oh, cool! That's and, really cool. And so, yeah. So, if if I have something in my storage that I've been waiting on and waiting on, and try to want to build a theme around that, mm-hmm. um, we had somebody that picked the theme as New England. They just oh, wanted cool. beers had to be from New England. New England. That's really cool that yep. you guys switch it up like that. So it's not like the same monotony every time. And you get something different every time. You know, someone picks a theme. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. Now. You're in the craft beer, obviously, and I Mike. To Mike, you can answer this question too. <laughs> the second Mike, I'm the first Mike. <laughs> what is not including Cigar City because obviously that's the main Florida brewery, in my opinion. Uh, what's your favorite brewery in Florida? Or you could do it like a top three, Funky if that if that, if that helps. Uh, I'll, I'll, like, what do you got, Mike? Well, I'm saying I like Funky Buddha. They're doing real good in Florida. Top three. You do uh, top cycle. three. Cycle's another good one. I mean, I uh, Tampa we're area. Excluding Cigar City, right? Excluding Cigar City, yeah. So then, uh, who's that one out of? Isn't there one in Jacksonville? Ardwolf. Ardwolf is the one that Jeremy's real big on. Intuition Ale Works. Um, if I if I had to pick, and and this order is how it exactly would go. Oh, uh, three, prepared. Three Sons Brewing. Oh, that's uh, yeah, that's, you guys, if you can hear, that's Mike groaning because he realized he screwed up and didn't offer. I was waiting yeah, for him to set himself up. Well, I only did two. That's the number one. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Three Sons Brewing is out of uh, Fort Lauderdale. Um, okay. They don't even have their own brewery opened up yet, but they won first place uh, beer and first ba- uh, place brewery at Hunapude. Oh, fantastic. And they are out of this yes. world. Incredible. We just got done um, in August. Was that late August? Late we August. went... We went over to um, Brass Tap. Sorry, I'm not trying to plug any competitors. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> down it's in right. Fort Lauderdale, I, Pembroke fan. Pines. <laughs> and they um, they brew out of the Fort Myers uh, Brewery. And they okay. bring all their beers exclusively to um, there because they're not in distribution. They don't right. have anything going yet. Once they fully established, they'll be going. Um, they are phenomenal. If anybody's down there, um, you know, 
once Three Suns opens up, it's definitely a place to look for. Uh -huh. I'd say number two by by a landslide and almost a number one is Cycle Brewing. Really? They, okay. Every time they do a limited bottle release, um, those bottles go so quickly, and mm -hmm. they're up the next day, and people are trading them out for other whales. So they're they're another mm -hmm. notoriety. Right. Um, and I would have to say, if you had to pick a third, Funky Buddha would definitely be number okay. three. Now, would Cigar City, if it was a choice, would you pick Cigar City as number one? Uh I have friends that work there, so I'd say, yeah, by far, they're so the hey, best. Hey, guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys are number one. I, unfortunately, I'd say Cigar City has kind of fallen to that uh, third spot. They're above Funky Buddha, but um, uh, they, they got, they've got some massive growing pains, and they've got some stuff that they're really trying to work on, and um, I, I, they're really trying to worry about that mass production factor. Right. Yeah. And what's happening is some of these uh, other beers that they're producing, uh, their specialty, the one-offs, um, you know, we just obviously had one that was phenomenal, but right. a, oftentimes they're kind of they're falling a little short. Yeah, and some of those I, I remember they had that session Amber Moon Gun was a little bit lackluster, yeah. um, but saison. some of the th cucumber oh, yeah, saison like tastes like <laughs> tastes like pickles. Uh, um, <laughs> but there are, I mean, some of their stuff just hits, man, and it's fantastic. They're gonna see, I mean, Cigar City. I think you'll see a resurgence with them yes. in a few years. Yes, uh, I know they're investing a ton of money in a barrel really? aging facility, mm -hmm. um, and they're gonna start putting out some really, really, they, really. Good beer they've got competition around the corner in St. Pete, so I think, and, and those yeah, guys Saint used Pete to Brain. work at Cigar City. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna they're 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 building a setup that's gonna be able to come back and combat that. And I, I would say probably by the end of next year, we'll You'll probably be, we'll probably out. be having a podcast and we'll be talking about how Cigar City is trying to climb back up there into the second place, right. maybe first place spot. Right. Mm -hmm. Jeff, same question. Top three floor breweries, oh, not man. including Cigar mine, City. Mine is gonna be a lot less uh, a lot less kind of a secret i guess <laughs> I, I i know more of the mainstream breweries obviously through distribution and what we can get here um and that's more what i'm concerned with it uh -huh. obviously as a beer lover i would love to go to some of these smaller places um but as far as what i can bring into world of beer is what i'm concerned with sure. um two henry's is fantastic in they're, plant they're city good, yeah. i love their beers they do a lot of cool stuff with local produce jalapeno local strawberries <laughs> that jalapeno blueberry is fantastic their russian imperial stout will blow sure. your mind um i do like and I, I know i'm probably in the minority on this one and i don't even know why i like them so much because i don't really <laughs> like belgian beers and they do almost exclusively belgian beers but i love persimmon hollow as well okay. um oh. They, if you get their beers fresh, he loves drunken. <laughs> if you get them fresh, they are good, guy. man. And that is a good quad yeah. uh, with cinnamon, vanilla. It's really nice. He has a best friend that works at Terrapin that did that collab, so he's kind of <laughs> got a vested interest. <laughs> and also, I do love, uh, I do love. I got to shout out the hometown brewery with Tequesta Brewing down in uh, down in Jupiter, Florida, or Inlet Brewing in Jupiter. Both are really good. They both do. Uh, a lot of tropical kind of inspired lighter cool. beers yeah. but there it's florida so yeah. you can't really hate on that and uh um to quest is good they have some really big big bold ipas and and their brew pub is really cool as sure. well so i i go there when i go home and i kind of got to plug them when i can because they're a, they're a great hometown brewer now one last question before we we move on to the second portion favorite local brewery so that's orange county osceola county Seminole county kind of around orlando obviously within a 45 minute drive not really not including happy. coco i'm not really happy with uh, with this question um i'm gonna <laughs> there's no wrong answer no no but, but the, uh, yeah, tampa's right down the, right around the my, okay half hour <laughs> no you guys know what no, i'm talking no, about no, <laughs> you understand even 45 minutes um even an hour um I'm, 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 I, I, I feel kind of bad saying this. Um, I really think Central Florida is really, really lacking. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I've, I've been to only one brewery here in Central Florida. Um, Brew Hub's a little too far outside that zone. Right. So I would, I would give it to Brew Hub if it was inside, only because they do brew some Cigar City and some Toppling Goliath stuff, which right, is right. awesome. But I would, I would have to definitely say that uh, Hourglass is the only one that I've actually ever went to. Because I've had these other beers come right. in, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in, in Central Central Florida's offerings, but that's why we have an awesome bottle distribution, <laughs> so it makes up for it. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned in the previous episode I think Central Florida's craft brewery scene is kind of lacking. Mm -hmm. uh, won't name any names, but I think Orlando as a whole can do better, considering where we're at geographically. Yeah. But I went to a little plug, Bo Bowegans in Castleberry. Okay. They opened up in uh, February, right there on Red Bug and 436. Okay. And you should go. 
Sure. Yeah, I'll definitely heard, check it out. I've heard great things about Mike, that. Mike, They're what's your favorite really local? Bo well, Egan's his mind, by the way. Is that, is that, again, a really loaded question. I don't, I don't really. I mean, usually when I'm going out for you know a nice brewery trip, I'm either heading to usually a coast, east or west, or, east <laughs> or, or west, south and north. north and south. <laughs> but I mean, I've been meaning to try. There's a, a local brewery coming up in Saint Cloud called Reprise Brewing. I okay. hear good things. I haven't been there, so I really can't speak of it. Right. But I want to try them, and I also hear a lot of good things about Crooked Can. I also want to try them. We have had some Crooked Can stuff. They are very good. Um, they're working on their core brands right now, yeah. and they're getting their core brands out in distribution. So that is uh, that's exciting, and it is they do have good cores. Um, what they build off of that is is interesting, and we'll see what comes of it. Uh, I haven't tried any of their one-off or any of their you know more rare offerings, but uh, I know that their core brands are pretty good. Yeah, Crooked Can just released their um, Russian Imperial Stout that's barrel aged, uh -huh. and uh, twenty-seven dollars a bottle. That's kind of rough. That's uh, kind of and, and the it's the old ticket. Yeah, right. Hey, it must yeah, be good, right? Um, exactly. From a brewery that, you know, no no fault to them. I mean, they're focusing on their brew. The, you know, when you walk into brewery in your tasting room, and they're focused on trying to get their cans and get them out to the you know distribution. But uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, for twenty seven dollars and all your lot. other stuff is mediocre at best. Yeah. Uh, and I'm saying bad. It's just it's just it's just bad. It's fair. Um, I'm looking for that wow factor, yeah. and unfortunately, this is their first one. You know, give them some time, give everybody some time, but uh, just I, 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 I can't see myself buying uh, buying a twenty seven dollars bottle. Yeah, yeah. Now maybe if three people want to go in on part of it, and then we'll get a sample. Even even, and I'm not hard up for money. Right. It's just I just I want to get something that's good. I don't want to be right. I don't want to be disappointed. Right. You know. Well, what I've seen with with Orlando and Central Florida in general, as far as the craft beer market goes, it kind of touches back to what I was talking about before with with a lot of a lot of uh, watered down beer market and, and everybody, unfortunately the way that it works is, is everybody either goes one of two routes where they specialize in what they do and they do it extremely well until they get noticed or they go right out of the gun and say, I need to get with a distributor so that I could end up in a place like World of Beer. Yeah. Um, the people that you've heard of are the people who did it the right way and they built a brand based yeah. on great beers and eventually somebody noticed them and said, wow, man, yeah. I can't believe Cigar City's doing this awesome stuff out in Tampa. Um, what we see in Orlando is everybody shooting out of the gates trying to get core brands and cans and get them in distribution and get them in the cooler everywhere they possibly can. And unfortunately, that is what waters down the beer market and makes it that much harder to get the mm -hmm. whales and get the good stuff that you actually want. Um, there's so much pressure on us to give those offerings to people because they're local and somebody went there and tried it. and. Oh my God! Their citrus wheat beer was the best thing since Bell's Oberon. Or they were really but, nice to me when I was there. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the quality beer is always there, um, and that's that's unfortunate in a way. But it's also kind of cool in a way that people are are doing that to to get into this market so heavily because the market is so big and it's yeah. so growing so fast. Um, I mean, I remember when I first got in, everybody said, "There's no way in hell." Uh, in heck that uh, <laughs> that they're going to ever word. that they're ever going to get to uh, thirteen percent of the beer market. No way, craft will ever be more than thirteen. And last I checked, we were over twenty three. So, um, you know, macros losing that much every year, a little bit three percent, two percent every year, yeah. and uh, it's it's exciting because you're seeing them kind of freak out as well, which is mm -hmm. fun. Um, but it's it's cool that it is that kind of market that people are that you know hungry to get into. Yeah. I just wish that more people took the time to really establish their brand, turn down a few offers from distributors and say, look, I know what I'm doing. Do it the right way. I want to build my brand. I want to get my following and I want to do this right. Yeah. Um, and when that happens, it's really, I mean, that's when you get the quality beers. Yeah. And, and we're, we're in a, you know, we're in, I don't, I don't want to call it a transient city. It's not. It's just n not a lot of people are from here and not a, pe a lot of people are permanent residents of Orlando. Yeah. So, well traveled, yeah. so when you're establishing a brand here, it's very difficult because you want to appeal to the masses because everybody is coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we've seen with a lot of the stuff out of here. Orlando Brewing, Orange Blossom are very mainstream breweries. And that's just kind of the way they built. Um, and they put out offerings that are, pal are very, you know, palate friendly, easy to drink, ap appeal to everybody kind of beers. Yeah. Um, they're not putting out the big Imperial Stouts, the double IPAs, the things that are the cool one-off brand, you know, awesome stuff that you see. Um, there's not much in Central Florida that is doing that, and I can't wait for the one that finally does, but it is, it's definitely a distribution-heavy kind of beer market here. Mm -hmm. yep. 
So, Jeff, same question. What's your favorite local brewery? <laughs> I think I just touched on it, didn't I? Uh, no, there's not much. I mean, uh, I would have to... I'd have to say Hourglass for the exact reason that David said before, yeah. that, that you talk about a fantastic group of people and people who really, they put in the effort. They were in a house for years. I mean, working yeah. out of a, you know, basically a living room and their tap room was, was like the kitchen of the house. So um, from them to go from what they have to that giant, beautiful facility they're in now. Um, and, and they put out some decent beers here and there, but the people are all amazing. and. Um, and that's, I mean, if you're going to go somewhere local that you want to just have a good time, have some good beers, they have a ton of stuff. It's not all theirs. They have a ton of beer offerings and the, you'll never get better service or friendlier people. Yeah. And, and they're, they're just a great, a great place to go. They're a fun time. Sure. Cool. So before David and Mike have to leave, what are we drinking? Okay. So this is actually our Randall tonight. Uh, Randall, for those of you who don't know, it's essentially a mini infusion tower where you can plug any beer in and, and put any kind of ingredient you want into it and it'll mm -hmm. infuse it and, and and kind of impart those flavors into it um, we do this every other Thursday um, and what we're drinking tonight is actually the Anderson Valley Goza with guava and mango infused okay. into it um, this is one of the better ones I've tasted in a long time it's it starts with that it. very tart <laughs> that very tart kind of sour light airy Yeasty. taste and it finishes with a, with a real nice rounded out sweetness of the mango and the guava um, really cool beer and and it's just something interesting that we do that's a little bit different than a lot of other bars that we kind of take the time and energy to give you something different and uh, yeah. for those loyalty members out there or anybody interested in the loyalty member it is actually uh, a brand new point on your loyalty card as well anytime that you get the randall here oh, cool. so I know that, yeah. yeah it's it's a new point um and it's just something cool that we do it's it, i i it's love good. this this beer here it's definitely good um the, the Randall's uh, kind of an interesting thing because uh, breweries treat their beers just like what we had, the Coconut Citra Pale Ale right. from Cigar City. They're treating their beers. They're, in essence, treating the beer right here on site. Yeah. Um, and the only, the only downfall to a Randall, but it, it's just going to be with anything, the first the first couple glasses are going to get strong, strong, very mm -hmm. in-your-face uh, flavors, which sometimes you want to be up front. Right. Uh, the middle, the middle uh, two-thirds of the batch is the best part, and then mm -hmm. the very tail end gets a little bit weak. Um, but I definitely would like to see, and maybe I can get twist Jeff's arm one of these days, is uh, Randall something to Skittles. Oh, we could do that. Skittles. <laughs> again. But you just gotta, you gotta keep, the great. thing is. Twist my arm, is, please. Like, if you get like an IPA <laughs> and you were to take like uh, the tropical Skittles that yeah. they have, the only thing is you have to have a lot on hand and you have to constantly, uh, you have to keep it replenished because the uh, color will come off the skin of the Skittles right, and there's right. the flavor. So. Yeah. so, I mean, Dave, what do you think of, of this, this Randall here? I think, I you think it's phenomenal. Because you quick. I saw you um, do it. Uh, well, I, I also have a glass that I, I, I went through a whole glass when yeah. I first came in because it is a point, guys. And we all know we're trying to get them points. Um, the, the big thing that, that I um, – I'm not a big fan of Gosas because the type of yeast that they use, um, just like cilantro does to some people, gives a soapy taste. Right. Uh, it actually gives me a slight um, vomit-type taste. Okay. So And it just brings my brain back to that point. So it's not uh, an extremely enjoyable one for me. <laughs> but um, if you're if you're able to balance it out and they're able to fight a little bit of that yeasty, um, strong in your face uh, yeast and stick more to the sour part of it, it's it's very hard. Um, I had a watermelon vice beer yesterday that was phenomenal. Um, but that it just they have to try to do it. But the mango is out of this world in in, in your face, and that's that's, that's it. Really a good changes thing. the profile of the goza, in my opinion. It really makes it more drinkable for someone who doesn't like sours. Mm -hmm. I like sours, but me too. It helps cover like the sourness of it. That style is, <laughs> uh, he, and I, I'm gonna I'll give a shout out real quick before we get to get going. Um, you know what's going on here at World of Beer, and and we're not partial just because we're here and we're drinking, and and they facilitate us with a beautiful roof over our head and a kitchen to feed our, you know, <laughs> our ever growing appetites. Um, the the nice thing that uh, that World of Beer will do for you if you're trying to get into craft beer. It gives you the ability to try a ton of beer right. and a ton of different styles. And when I first started, I drank all the German beers. I just stuck to the German cooler. And um, I, I worked my way from there, and, and I went from Blondes and Hefeweizens. And then next you know, I started trying you know, different styles. I tried trying IPAs. I was not a fan. Right. I hated them. I thought they were disgusting. Why would anybody want to drink something bitter? Um, and even the, some of the Russian Imperial Stouts, I could kind of get into. Mm -hmm. But the one that was still getting me was the Belgian Quads. Um, because you know, just it's really sweet. It's not the right kind of sweet. Yeah. Um, sours were not something I was really into, but by being at World of Beer and and doing that drive to constantly go after the next point, 
and not being afraid and letting the world beer staff kind of guide you through this. Um, my first 500 beers just were constantly guided through with what they recommended. Right. And we just worked through it, worked through it, and I kind of fo- found what I liked. And then you grew into something different mm-hmm. and grew. And now I'm, I'm proud to say that there is not even a single style of beer that I do not like. Belgian quad. I, I, I actually can enjoy a Belgian quad <laughs> if it's barrel aged in vanilla. Um, but but the, the one the one style that a lot of people turn and scoff at is Rausch beer, and it's one of my favorite styles of a German. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so actually, I, a, smoked, a smoky, just it has almost a bacony type taste. And and I'm not. It's not a Rausch beer. Like I said, I'm telling you right now that that uh, do you know. Do yourself a favor, get a loyalty membership, and honestly, just just get the points for a reason, and and go through, get your perks, get yep. your thing, become part of the uh, the culture here, and let them show you what you like. Let them show you. They'll talk to you, and these guys. I mean, they, Cassie, they Jeff, um, Darren up there. Darren's phenomenal, and they they can tell you. Do you like this beer? Then you will like this beer. Right. And and and, and I'll tell you, more often than not, they hit the nail on the head. So, and that's how I I had to be kind of. Someone had to pull my hand through this thing, yeah. and, and I'm glad to say that 500 beers after that, you know, I don't you need it. my hand held anymore. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but um, you know, just it's just it's just the cool. right place to do it. Cool. So, you guys I mean, got I'll time do. for one more beer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Before you guys well, get going, we got a, we got people showing up. If you okay, can, yeah. So, but uh, well, we I'll definitely be back guy. over yeah, after the yeah, podcast, and uh, you're going to be getting samples. So, cool, cool. Me and Jeff hang out here. We'll see you guys soon. Mike, I appreciate it. Jeff, as always, we appreciate it. And. Hopefully, we're on uh, some follow-up shows in the future. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We'll be here. Oh, don't worry. I'll weekly. be joining you guys in a few minutes. <laughs> awesome, guys. <laughs> Have fun, guys. Right, thank and, you. Uh, stay thirsty because beer will actually dry you out and make you thirsty. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. So, they had to leave. It was a good It was a good segment. I liked it. I learned mm-hmm. a lot. Did you He's take, did good, you take away anything from it? Um, or did you just know everything? No, I mean, I knew what they were I knew what they were doing. Um, no, it's it's interesting. He said some things about um, you know, the Roush beers and the things like that and and kind of how he got held his hand through um, you know, through his beer exploration. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's I mean, shameless plug for World of Beer. That's what we were built on. That's what right. we, you know, focused on doing. All of our staff uh, right down to barbacks, door guys, everybody in our kitchen even um, has gone through a beer school and we talk about every style of beer. You learn oh, yeah. intricate details about every style of beer. And um, you learn, I mean, you, you learn how to do exactly mm-hmm. what he just said, to bring somebody from from no knowledge and bring them into a thousand club member who's doing bottle shares right. with rare beers. Um, it's intimidating to get into this world. When I first got hired here, I knew nothing about beer. And uh, we went through beer school and mm-hmm. that fire gets lit. And some, you know, some people it doesn't, most people here it does. And we bring them through and, uh, Man, when you get somebody, my favorite thing is somebody who comes in and goes, I only I only drink Bud Light. What, what do you have for me? Yeah. And to bring somebody like that um, into the world of IPAs or sours yeah. or anything through time. I mean, I have uh, I have loyalty members that when I was bartending more often over at uh, the Altamont World of Beer um, that came in and, and all they drank were sours. Or, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, our ciders or, or pale lagers. Right. Um, and they drank through every single one of them that we had. And, and then you bring them into something else and you say, hey, you know, try this, try this. Um, I have a, a loyalty member who for over a year drank nothing but ciders and I kept pushing him into new things. And I actually just <laughs> yeah. went back to uh, to Altamont a week ago and mm-hmm. ran into him and he was drinking a double IPA. And I was wow. like, man, that is amazing to me yeah. that you're drinking this. And he's like, dude, I just found out I love IPAs. And I, I had no idea because the first IPA I ever I tasted, I didn't like it. And I thought I hated IPAs. Yeah. Um, but you don't know because you might have had one IPA that you just particularly don't care for. And then mm. you judge the entire the entire um, style by that one beer. So it's exciting, man. I, I, I'm glad I got to be a part of what we do here. And I'm glad I got to learn what I've learned about beer and, and see it from both sides from see it from an enthusiast but also mm-hmm. see it from a, distri- a distribution and, a, and yeah. a bar setting type place and uh and really make it accessible to people who are afraid to go try uh you know craft beer somewhere yeah so like kind of i mean we both know what beer school is like so mm-hmm. it's someone yep. you know people listening to this and i know we've touched on it a couple of times about you know beer school like how how what is beer school like if you haven't gone through it like what 
what kind of grueling task does World Beer put their employees through when they, beer, first, when they first bring them beer on? Beer school is what I describe when I'm hiring people now and what I, what I <laughs> felt when I went through beer school is beer school is the hardest test you're ever going to take in your life. <laughs> Agreed. And then, you, and then you do it twice. Yep. Um, it's, uh, the first week is a 500-page presentation about every style of beer, what makes them different. You go into the history of beer, you go into what the ingredients are, how everything is brewed, different yep. brewing techniques, um, ales versus lagers, stouts versus porters, every single beer question that you've ever heard and debated at a bar with your friends. Yep. Uh, we dive into that so that we're well-versed in understanding you know, how to, how to properly bring you through the world of beer. Um, you do that for a week. It's, uh, it's five days of intense learning. And then we take a test that you need to get at least a 90% or higher on in order to continue working here. Then the second week is every single one of our beers in our cooler. We go one by one through them, over 500 beers. Uh, talk about each of them, what they are, what makes them what they are, and how you would sell them. Um, that week also includes breweries from all over the country and world where they're located, some of their best beers, uh, yep. and, and <laughs> also how you would go about uh, associating certain mainstream macro beers with mm -hmm. other breweries and other beers as well. Um, the goal is, and, and obviously if you, if you do come to World of Beer, you know this, we need to know not just what style it is and give you another style that's similar. We need to know every beer in our cooler and oh, how yeah. it associates with any other beer in our cooler. Um, and it's difficult at times to know that if you're comparing somebody, because not everybody walks in and says, I only like Bud Light. Some people come in and say, I only like my box. Yeah. And half, half the is. listeners are probably like, I don't know what a my box is. So, <laughs> um, so for us to know that, but then not only know what a my box is, how it tastes, what, what the premium or what the, pr uh, the bigger flavors are and, right. and what ingredients lead to that. But sometimes what you lead somebody to isn't a direct correlation to what mm -hmm. they just said. Mm -hmm. There's times where somebody says they like Bud Light and you go, okay, well that's a, that's a pale lager. Um, you would, you would guide that person into loggers because they're easier and they're lighter and everything. And then you say to yourself, well, wait a second, maybe it's a white wheat, you know, maybe right. this particular person likes the fact that it has that kind of like crispness to mm -hmm. it and that citrusy. So, um, you have to know how everything kind of plays off each other and where you can guide people so that we can take them into something that they appreciate even yeah. more. Um, it's, it's very intense training uh very intense <laughs> and and when you come out on the other side you're ready to talk beer with people and and it's not even and that scratches the surface of what this job actually is it still takes another six months before you can genuinely know yeah. about beer um but that'll get you to the point where i could take your average beer drinker and take them to the uh, next level mike's coming back okay gentlemen this is recipro reciprocal reciprocal this is out of maine this okay. is a brewery only release. Uh -huh. It is a very, very pungent, very hoppy, uh, not too hoppy, but um, citra, orangey, orange juice, tons and tons of It, it almost fruit. looks like orange juice. And if you let it warm yeah. up, try it uh, cold, yeah. and let it warm up a little bit, I think you guys will definitely enjoy it. Okay, cool. thank you. Right. Yeah, what, what a swell guy. This is a uh, very hazy IPA. Um, looks almost <laughs> like orange yeah. juice. Yeah. Crazy, crazy citrus notes in the front. And... Yeah. Uh, Definitely, orange juice was hop. a great was a great example of what this <laughs> yeah. is because it's an interesting looking beer. So I mean, to go to continue with the training, I mean, if you if you pass both, um, we both have passed uh, beer school, but you know, an employee here at World of Beer would, you know, be more or less a craft beer expert. Yeah, I, I would mean, that's say the end goal, that's the end goal of, well, of beer school. So, for instance. Um, those of you who do who do know about craft beer to, to any extent that are listening I have probably heard of the Cicerone program, which is essentially the craft beer equivalent of a sommelier. Yeah. Um, the the Cicerone program is a is now a four tier. It used to be a three tier. It's now a four tier system where there's basically you work your way up to being a master Cicerone. Uh, after training with World of Beer, the day after beer school, you could take Cicerone certified beer server level one exam right. and pass that without any question. And that's that's something that people train for and, and actually you know study for um, yeah. in order to become a certified beer server. We could. That's what we try to strive for. Is that if you get out of beer school, you are essentially 
at the level where you could be a Cicerone certified beer server. And that's, that's what we're shooting for. And that's why you go to other places. And yes, we all know that craft beer is everywhere now. Yeah, at this point. You yeah. could go into Applebee's and there will be some offering of something craft. Buffalo Wild but, Wings, Ale House, anywhere. You're right. And so what we want to do is elevate our staff to the level that if you come in and you know that you want something better than macro beers, but you don't necessarily know what that is, mm -hmm. that you're getting you're getting brought into that world by somebody who has experienced, tasted, and knows what knows they're talking about. about it. And, you know, um, aroma, taste, profiling. Okay. It just even the proper way to drink the beer and understand yeah. it because we you guys can't see us here doing this but every beer that we've opened up here to talk about every single person at the table has done the exact same thing we put it up to our nose, <laughs> nose. we smell it we look at the color you take one small sip you get yep. that mouth feel and then you drink it and it's it's one of those things that yes we take it for granted but that's something that we've learned throughout our time here and yep. through our training that that you can pass off to a customer and um and really make craft beer accessible to people it's hard it's an intimidating world yeah oh yeah it, it absolutely. is it's a very intimidating world to come in and look at eight cooler doors full of fi over 500 beers yeah. and 40 beers on tap and say yeah. holy crap what do i drink all over the world um, all over the world you know and and we make it accessible as best mm -hmm. we can and we try to help people find what they like yeah i mean that's i think where world of beer really excels in is that you know there's we, we ucf location has 50 taps 500 bottles at most, sometimes might have a little less bottles. Do the um, at the most, we have right around 550 bottles. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it, we, I mean, we're constantly rotating them out. We have loyalty members who have been with us who are over 2,000, uh, over 2,000 beers. You don't get that way unless you're constantly rotating in new beers. Um, and that's one of the things. Actually, we have another beer in front of us now. It's the uh, Innocent Gun White Oak Wheat Beer. It's a brand new offering from a Scottish brewery called Innocent Gun. They do fantastic barrel-aged beers um, and a lot of just really cool styles that you don't see in America a lot. Um, and this beer is very similar. When I started laughing when, when uh, <laughs> David brought up Roush beers because I tried it. Have you tried this one yet? The, uh, the Innocent the Gun? The Innocent Gun. I just finished it, yeah. It is, uh, it's very smoky. It's very, good, yeah. it's very almost bacony in a mm -hmm. way. It, I was not anticipating this being like a Roush beer. Yeah. But then when you smell it and you taste it, it is very similar to an, a Roush beer. But you get that white oak... Uh, flavor and that mm -hmm. barrel up front and then it, it mellows out into a nice wheat beer with a really good smoky taste and that'll be one of our new offerings on Tuesday um, which is when we release all our new beers so any given Tuesday you can come in and there'll be anywhere from you know six to twelve to sometimes twenty brand new beers that have never been in the door before um, and it's really cool it's a great night to come out and and get new points or just try new beers and see what's new in the market and kind of the new trends because this market's constantly changing, yeah. and I mean, I, I always say I'm excited to see what the craft beer market looks like in five years because oh, absolutely. we have, you know, we have 10,000 breweries doing something new and something innovative every day, mm -hmm. and even if 1% of that is good, you're going to find new styles in five oh, yeah. years that don't exist and completely new things. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the craziest beer you've tried? The craziest, like, off the wall, you know? Uh, in terms of flavor, it would be probably Billy's Chili's. It's uh, they use five different peppers, and they blend them in the beer, and they give it to you. Oh, and pizza beer, pizza, uh, Ma Mama Mia's see? pizza beer. And everybody's doing something. None crazy of which like were that. very good, but you know it's something different that you never think you'd be able to put a pepperoni pizza. I, in I mean, a, I had a beer. A beer. Uh, I had a beer a couple weeks ago, part of uh, David's bottle share actually. I don't remember what brewery it was. It was a clam uh, clam bake beer, and it was it literally tasted like you were drinking what would be the equivalent of a, of a clam bake like yeah, it tasted yeah, yeah. like you were drinking clams and it was it's weird that that exists but it was great in its own way um dogfish head just did the chalk lobster beer for us as a wob exclusive and it was, was chocolate good. and lobster yeah. and it's just who thinks to put a lobster in a beer yeah. um a big thing is oyster stouts or oyster saisons where they're brewed with yeah. actual oysters yeah um it's just interesting to see what the world is is putting out there and what people are thinking to make beer out of yeah and it's it's insane to me to see what the next step is how are they going to push the envelope that next yeah. step further i mean yeah and, and these breweries are changing ingredients like left and right to where you know, the other week when we went to Bowiegans, I had a, a cherry wood smoked porter. Like that's you know, and they the, the malt he used was cherry smoked, and there was you know got a little bit of cherry smokiness, but he still got like a, a you know like a chocolate nuttiness. And then a beer we had was a peanut butter hefeweizen. 
which he's he <laughs> sweated out the clove. Yeah. He sweat out the clove. And it tastes like bananas and peanut butter. That's so weird. <laughs> that's not a that's not a pairing I would have thought to make. Um, I've had peanut butter stouts and porters, but yeah, I've never so thought of a hefeweizen. But that's a fantastic batch. Was, and they're all balanced. They're all balanced. And like you would never think you can combine such different things together, but it, it somehow works out. For better, or for worse. That's and that's exactly what I hope that this market continues to do. And and like I said, I'm optimistically hoping for one percent of the beers that people are putting out to be good. Yeah. Um, when they're pushing the envelope, at least. Obviously, I want a hundred percent of beers to be good. But mm -hmm. when you're trying something new and, and innovating the market and trying to be something completely different, if you can hit one percent of the time, you might just get that next whale. You might get yeah. that next Hunapu. You yeah. might get that next uh, Dark Lord. You know, and it's. And it, it, you never know until you no, try no, until it. You do it. So, so with with kind of elaborating on, so every Tuesday here at, at World Beer UCF, it's their uh, loyalty night. So the new, all the new bottles and whatnot come out Tuesday. So if you want to get more points, Tuesday is the day to do it. Correct. Before yep. they sell out, <laughs> which has happened depending on the oh, bottle. Yeah. There are certain <laughs> there's certain bombers that come in that when you see that bottle hit the shelves, it'll be gone in an hour. Yeah. Um, and that's that's not atypical for here. Um, slam. <laughs> it's usually the whales, uh, the the whales that are in distribution. Obviously, yeah. if we get if we come across something that is very very rare, we usually can't get it because it's not in distribution. So that'll mm -hmm. be something that David has to bring in for us through a yeah. trade or something, and we can try it ourselves here. Um, but the the big things that we do get that you you know that people line up at the door for and those will be on our facebook page those will be on our snapchat and our instagram um and you'll know when they're coming out yep. if you follow us and mm -hmm. uh definitely come in on tuesday early and Absolutely. get them before they're gone because yeah. they're uh, with a keg you usually have at least a day, <laughs> a day yeah. at least <laughs> yeah uh but when it's bottles and there's a finite amount you never know yeah, how you, long you it'll last know. for so, I mean, and, and the people who may be intimidated with craft beer and you're in the Orlando area, you want to come to, to World of Beer UCF, I think Tuesday would be the best night to come, personally. Absolutely. Because you have, you know, the heavy hitters, the loyalty there. That These people, you know, like David, who's over a 1,000, like these people come here every Tuesday to get the points, to try the new beers. And, you know, if you're, you know, the regular, so, you know, the staff here knows them. So if, if you want to come in and you may be kind of cautious or hesitant to try a beer, talk. The guy sitting next to you probably has 2,000 beers under his belt. Yeah, I mean, and that's the cool thing, too, about what I – and what I really love about craft beer is that this the, – the craft beer culture and the people that are here that have 2,000 beers are never going to be pompous about it or try to make you feel stupid for not knowing. Absolutely. Um, and that was honestly part of what made me so interested in beer and what made me really grow as a server and as a bartender was, was that – when you're learning, there's just as much interest in the in the customer teaching you as there is in you teaching the customer. Yeah. Um, and that's fantastic if you're coming into a place and you don't know anything about beer. Right. You walk in and all of a sudden you have a, a customer next to you uh -huh. who knows more about beer than anybody in the building, right. who's had 2,500 2, beers, and yep. he's just ready to talk about it and mm -hmm. ready to inform you. I mean, David Boston, uh, the gentleman that was just here, he he comes in, uh, he came in one night and taught one of our new servers how to properly pour a Hefeweizen. Um, and that's a customer, you know? Yeah. And and that's kind of the cool thing about being here is is they they are invested in what we do well yeah um and yep. that's and that's what makes it so much fun and so awesome to be here on especially on a tuesday night with all the loyalty members yeah because they will definitely try to help you out figuring out what your taste buds are and what you love yeah and that's and that's i mean i've mentioned this hundreds and hundreds of times but craft beer is an industry that unless you're in it you don't understand the just the genuine people that are involved everywhere i've gone and talked craft beer with people they're more than willing to here have a sample here let me show you this here you know they don't judge you they don't make fun of you they don't say oh well you know i'm better than you because i've had this much like everyone's so willing to here try this beer like we're doing now it's not about profiting or it's not about being better it's it's welcoming another person to like the crappier family and that's something that i i can't think of an industry or a group or society that really does that Oh, not so, at to all. craft beer. Like even the even the fact that this bottle share exists here tonight is sign of that. That yeah. that you they are bringing in 
beers that are worth hundreds of dollars a bottle. That they you can know? keep to themselves. And they, they can could share easily it. bring that home and mm-hmm. enjoy that with their wife and, and watch TV and, yep. and just really dive into that beer themselves because that they earned it and they worked hard for it. But instead, right. they'd rather come here and talk about it with us on a on a podcast that realistically he has no reason to give us any of his no, beer not at all no but he just brought us over that uh that super citrusy ipa yeah for for just no reason just, just to show it to us to, you know hey try this and, it's, and that's what this that's what this culture is and that's what i love about it so much is is for the most part i mean obviously there's outliers in any industry but for the most part, you're talking about just people who just genuinely enjoy life, enjoy yeah. beard, want to share it with people. Yeah. And and, and that is, is something that's just awesome. Like going to different breweries that I have and I'm sure you've have and and that you just you just welcome with open arms and you know, when I you know, record at breweries, they don't say they don't ask what's your listener base, what's this? They just say, Yeah, sure, come on in. And they you walk in with all this equipment and they're like, All right, you can sit here and talk to us and like they're more than willing to take the time out of their busy day and, and, you know, share their beer with you and, and talk about it. And that's just something that is so mind blowing to this day for me is well, that it's, it's funny because he said it earlier when he was like, Oh, not to plug another, another bar when he said <laughs> brass tap. Well, this isn't, it is obviously we're in direct competition with places and that's, that exists in business. But you know, Wab Altamont is, is Uh-oh. 10 minutes from Mike's hourglass. Uh Oh, <laughs> what do we got? What did you got? You got some delicious cherry truffle abduction from Pipeworks. Cherry, cherry truffle Chicago. abduction. Abduction by Pipeworks? Yes. So this is out of Chicago. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, beer I'll, trade right at its best. I love Can't how we beer. all of us look at it, smell it, and then sit on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this one, really this one looks it. like one that needs to warm up a bit before <laughs> we really you appreciate it. I love when I sit there and everybody looks at me with my snifter. Everyone, everyone looks really cold. I got my snifter and I got my hands wrapped around it and everybody's like, what are you doing? Waiting for waiting for my beer to get a nice 95 degrees. You're darn cold. You got to let it warm up. What are you doing? So obviously you guys can't see this, but it looks, it looks like motor oil. You know, a, a, a light brown in the foam head way. in the best way. It's very dark. Very dark. Cold, but we're going to let it warm up. But you can smell, I smell cherry like licorice. A little bit of toffee. Smokiness. Has a really nice dry finish. It yeah. doesn't hang on or, or make your throat close up like some of the bigger syrupy st- uh, stouts do. Yes. It's very crisp and, and yeah, nice finish. Yeah. Drink it. And I'm guessing somewhere in the 8.5% range. <laughs> Mike may not wait know a, that question. Wait a, wait Does it matter? I usually drink because, for you, flavor style. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, back well, when I was in my, you know, in my younger 40s, days, yeah. I'd be like, oh, give me some Hurricane. That's 11%. Give me some of that. <laughs> that doesn't last very long. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, uh, it, the reason I say that is because you can tell, obviously, when you when you look you can, at you and, taste and taste it, and you can taste that boozy, that warmth, yeah, you can smell uh, it that booziness now. to it, but... There's beers that that booziness is way out of balance on, and this one is not one of those. Yeah, um, I, this is you taste that there's ooh. alcohol in it, ooh. but that's, it that's is good, uh, finishes good so of, crisp. Out of Florida, I mean, not, I mean, like Five Works, like I said, Chicago, solid brewery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear a lot of good things. We just can't get them. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, well, unless through David. Beer yeah, it's like, <laughs> through David. Yeah, through we, David. Could, we could all we could try Three it's, Floyds this, all day, this, but unfortunately, <laughs> we don't yeah. get it down here. You know, Three Floyds, another great one, with the exception, like we said before. Dark Lord, they've been kind of having a. I know issue your, with their, your with hatred their, with Dark Lord. I'm gonna have to pick your brain about. Well, I mean, <laughs> every time I've had it, I've only had their, you know, their plain Jane, just yeah. Dark Lord. And every time, uh, I think it was the first one I had was a 2013, too syrupy. Uh, 2015 had a metallic taste to it. Yeah. And I, I, I'm told that's, you know, well, bottle specific. Some balls had it, some balls didn't. But I tell you, everybody mm. always sticks with, you know, like the vanilla Dark Lord. Out of this world, world. Out of yeah. this world there's, amazing. There's definitely beers that are and like then, that, and then when they get treated, they're fantastic. Yeah. And it's one of those, uh, to be honest with you, and I know I'm committing blasphemy right now, but Hunapu is one of those beers for me. That, oh, my God. That core <laughs> core Hunapu, to me, is a fantastic base for something to be done to it. And that is... No, I'm I, uh, I'm a little I'm a little I like core hunapu. See, and this, I'm, this, I'm, this is why this world is awesome. Yeah. I like core hunapu. I've had a double barrel. I still like regular hunapu better. 
Brandy really? Barrel Hunaboo, still like regular Hunaboo. That Hunaboo Brandy better. Barrel one, you liked regular Hunaboo better? Yeah, I, I, oh I got a bowl goodness. of freaking uh, Brandy Barrel just sitting up in the cupboard waiting what was, to trade uh, out. What was the one that we tried the, with the, it was it was Brandy Barrel, right? A couple weeks ago with, I mean, the, with we the ancho doing, chilies and, ancho all, chili that. and yeah. all that. Yeah. Uh, we were doing a couple different ones, but Brandy Barrel was probably one of them because we happened to come off a good, very good trade where we got ourselves. A, yeah, a I mean that was a that was a monster bottle rare share. Stuff, the whales of Hunapu. That was a were. monster share. When you have Prairie Bomb <laughs> in the mix and it's the worst beer that you tra- taste, it's not a bad day. Prairie yeah. Bomb is great, and it's the, it was the probably the one the lower end of the offerings that day. So That's it. funny story. <laughs> you say Prairie Bomb, it makes me think of. Uh, I mean, the beer trading, beer shipping, sometimes mm-hmm. it's work, but. Very important thing to know about it is, I mean, this happened with David. I don't know, but I've seen it, you know, because I've helped yeah. him with his trades. Uh, you, it's sometimes important to make sure you negotiate these trades because sometimes, you know, you get a, a founder's backwoods bastard and like, what? Why? Why did that why, even why, make why it? Why did in? you give me this? I could buy this at 7 Eleven. Yeah. Why? And this is nothing. <laughs> hey, sometimes you can get some really you know, weird beers can. at 7 Eleven. <laughs> yeah. yeah. well, I walked into uh, the 7 Eleven on my house and it had a stack of hundreds of 120 minutes. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> like, what is this? Exactly what? What I was it was say like, this is like, like nine cases of 120 <laughs> minutes. They had a better price than a uh, total wine. They were, yeah. They, were, they, just, they didn't know. They had no idea what they, they had. They had no idea. No and then we all go there and tell them, and now they're no, you, you don't tell him. We you all buy have our all. secret spots. I'm not yeah. dropping it on uh, this podcast. You buy, don't it, worry. you buy it all, and then <laughs> that's, there's that's a hard trade it. Right there. I'm not telling you guys where that's I live, but there is a 7-Eleven yeah. that has no idea about craft beer, <laughs> but they bring in some monsters, and you have no idea why. About it now, sadly. <laughs> well, this one, this guy, oh man, he has no idea, but all he knows is that craft beer is a thing. So yeah, he, yeah. whenever he gets offered anything, he I'll brings it in. <laughs> he brings it in, and then he just prices it by whatever their their you know method of pricing is, and he has no idea to upcharge anything for anything or put limits on anything. And it's right by my house. And I'm, like I said, I'm not telling you where I live. Six pack but, of one uh, twenty for ten bucks. <laughs> yeah, it was like liter- it was literally a four pack of one twenty. It was like eleven dollars. Yeah. So I'm like, this is amazing. Done, done. Yeah. <laughs> and I will buy back. a case. I know. Let me dip into the savings for this. Yeah. Cause Hell yeah. Trade it. Buy it all and trade it. Exactly. Yeah. It's, and you get a killing it's for that. crazy. I mean, there's some great places around here to get some good stuff. I will plug. Uh, I will plug, even though they are, like I said, a, a competitor of ours. I'm gonna plug Public House. Oh with, my! With, what are you talking about? With Shamrock. <laughs> uh, yeah. With Shamrock over there. They. If you want to go into a place that just has some fantastic craft beer and, and a really good craft beer section of their liquor store, um, Shamrock over on uh, basically on University and Alafea, more or less, um, yeah. behind the Applebee's over there. They have a great craft beer selection, and you can get some really good stuff at great prices over there. They rarely have the monsters, but they have great offerings all the time at reasonable prices, and that's a good place to kind of get into it. Yeah. Um, Pat's Liquor over on uh, McCulloch and Alafea as well. Yeah. They have some really good stuff. Hello, David. We're, you can take all of those. You can those. take them. <laughs> I have a ton of them behind the bar. What, is Darren not helping you? <laughs> so to go... Oh, so this beer is definitely boozy. As it warmed a lot, up, a lot of it tasted very good. It's like a little heavy. cherry dancing on my tongue right now. That's why, at least with me and craft beers, I'll start off, you know, you smell it. You get a good feel for it. You sip it while it's cold just to see, you know, yep. maybe it's going to be good. And then you just do it slowly. That way you know it warms up, and as it progresses, you know. And we just talked about that <laughs> yeah. prior to you getting here. Oh, and, you well, just, yeah. and you just said, like, word for word how oh, we well, talked about you proper heard. tasting. You. So you did, you nailed it. <laughs> and something else, before while we're on the subject, you're, you usually were talking about great places to get beer. Yep. Now, one thing is kind of an up and down thing. I'm going to talk about Tool Wine for a minute. Yes. Go for it. Tool Wine, sometimes, you know, I know that sometimes they really, they really, they hit the nail on the head. They got it. Other times, you know, for at least for an instance, me, I do the Tool Wine on uh, Millennia. And it just seems they, they have nothing. They've been holding, and they'll, they'll do it behind the shelf. They'll hold the same. Don't beer. tell everybody about that. They're going to take it from us. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no trust me. I hope they do. I imagine once they empty behind the shelf, they'll put something else there. Because nobody's <laughs> buying it. It's crap beer. And uh, here late, yeah, Tomoka. But. Uh, we talk- like Tomoka. Yeah, I like Tomoka. Uh, I, uh, it's, a, it's an opinion. You can. Yeah. You can no, if mean, you're not it's, fond it's, of Tomoka, it's, it's, it's all right. Me. And then, like, uh, their latest uh, behind the counter, because I mean, the behind the counter kind of like special release. You know, this is going to be a hard beer to get. Right. That Bell's Hell Hath No Fury, which is which we had on tap. Exactly. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not that rare. And, and they're, they're putting uh, these. 
days it seems they're putting things behind the shelf that well, every other major exactly like you said right on the shelf no limit buy as much as you want right seems like they're trying to trick you into thinking oh it's behind the shelf you better buy it well total wine and like you just said it, they will have some rare stuff what i find with them is they do exactly that they want to trick you into believing what you're getting is super rare um i went to the total wine out in uh altamont right across from the world of beer out there first week it opened they were sitting on uh, just to tell you how much they how much buying power they have and what they were sitting on they were sitting on some like uh bourbon county that released five months prior and they were sitting on that when they first opened so they got kegs prior to them opening that were held for them for their uh for their growler station um i'm coming up thinking they've got three bourbon counties on tap at their growler station and that hasn't released in five months i wonder what they have behind the counter right now absolutely and they had funky buddha blueberry cobbler and that was oh, it. Was, and that was so, it. And so, don't get me wrong. Great good, beer. But I great thank beer. you. Thank you. But, but, <laughs> but to hide bad, it, but to hide it. And then, and then I come back to the same world of beer two months later, and they have an entire display of it. And, I mean, I and, and, and you can buy an entire better. case of it. And you're like, Ooh, man, it's like yeah, sweet good, potato is fantastic. And, and they for sure. just sh- sitting on the pallet. Yeah, Poop sitting on the I mean, I mean, it comes to the thing of is is bottle better or is tap better, and that's a whole other conversation. Of I've had that's for next week. Oh, I've had, I mean, te- I've had teaser. I've had blueberry <laughs> cobbler on tap, and it tasted a lot better blueberry cobbler than bottle. I agree with you on that. I agree with and you. And the vice versa with sweet potato casserole, I liked it from a bottle more than a tap. With sweet potato casserole in the bottle, it tasted like a pumpkin release yeah and with it on tap it tasted like sweet potato yeah. casserole I'm go so with, I'm go with bottles. yeah all my experience you know, the I, bottle I, is better uh, on that particular brand for me i, I, I lean towards the tap Buddha more stuff. so i mean last snow yeah morning wood, last snow in a snow bottle beer. might be one of the best beers ever exactly. I've, so ne- I've never had one you've never had last snow no never oh my goodness it's are you amazing. i've had, I've had i think Terran i've had 30 aged. of them in the last year every time it becomes available i buy a bomber of it. I, I just bought a bomber of it like a week ago i found one i was like i'm buying this right now like i have i have like four at home <laughs> here's another teaser for ball traders that's what we do for instance me and david uh funky buddha we were aware that they were going to have a last snow release so what do we do we uh show up a nice hefty five hours before the release ensures herself a nice first spot in line it's always good to you know somebody wants to make the trip with you they're called mules <laughs> <laughs> this is a drug trading world <laughs> yeah. it, you know if you can get some people with you because oh I my mean, god the beers are coming now oh, holy man. moly got here? this is a vanilla porter out of new york i don't remember the name of the brewery but cassie brought it okay yeah she yeah. told okay. me she was bringing this one so. it's a little warmer than i like but that's all right with me. Uh, no, I Warmer think Dave, is David's good. on mule, right? David was just <laughs> on mule. Currently mule. He's that currently the mule. Moment ago, currently mule now. So what? What is this beer? This is a vanilla porter from a brewery, and I'll have to ask Cassie. She just was up in New York and brought some beers back with oh, her. Oh, nice! So, Thank you, Cassie. Um, the one Buffalo came from, I would imagine. Yes, I would imagine. Yeah, I would guess that would make sense I was to me. You knew that one. I, I, I do not. Cassie's a very secretive soul over there. She likes to. Keep well, her, I just want keep to her thank, sources thank secret. Cassie for bringing oh this back amazing. down. But that is good. Very wow. heavy on the vanilla. That is on the, on the smell. That was, that was sitting out. This is it is definitely warm. This so is light. This is um this is obviously uh, this is just a standard vanilla porter, so it's not going to be anything that'll blow your socks off as far <laughs> as uh, mouthfeel or or ABV goes. But, but as far as flavor, this yeah. is a fantastic beer. Very Great. similar to the Breckenridge Porter except that it might even be better, which is pretty hard to say because Breckenridge has probably cornered the market in vanilla porters. Absolutely. I but 100% agree it, with this that. This is probably better, I, I would say. It's a lot more of a cream, whipped cream, maybe because it's warm and not, not cold. But I, I will find out the brewery for you guys on that one. I swear, we'll I swear this to, guy would love Last Snow. I just feel it. I, just feel I know. Like, I, last Snow would be your favorite beer, I think. Yeah, I'd say it's favorite beer. <laughs> I've had, I've had Heady Topper. I've had you know all the big ones. Westville Terran that's been aged for three and a half years. That, that's the one that I have yet to have. I've never Flatterman. had Last Snow. Never. 
but you know, like I said, man, again. Have I'm you just, had Have you had West Bullet, uh, Veteran? Yeah, twelve. Yeah, I liked it. I it, have not David had it, man. I mean, the it. fact that it doesn't it, it was, not that's not even a fun. distribution <laughs> problem for me as far as like, oh man, it doesn't distribute to my state. That doesn't distribute to my country. That's, like, that's, <laughs> that's strictly, <laughs> like, strictly a trading like, beer. I, yeah. you so for me, it's like you I know the people. opportunity to drink that beer is very limited for me, and and that is a hard thing to do. I only I still I don't even know how he got the one he got. That is, uh, I mean, but, I can't wait. To, you know, the craziest story about that beer is uh, is Derek, one of our old GMs, who actually now is a Dogfish Head rep working for a great brewery. Um, if you're not familiar with Dogfish Hi, Head, a great brewery out of Delaware, yeah. one of the best ones in the country, I would argue, at least. Um, yeah. And he's Absolutely. he's doing, uh, he's been an awesome, awesome friend to me and a, and a good guy for World of Beer. But um, he is, uh, he got Wes Fletter in, and he told me this story when I first started, and I did not understand just how absurd this was at the time <laughs> but he got it and i guess they got some large quantity which for that beer is probably four bottles would yeah. be the largest quantity i would imagine yeah. to and he told me hardest to get it was number one for a while yeah, i think it still is i think it still is yeah. and uh and they had enough of it that they felt confident letting their dog have a shot of it and i'm like you cannot be telling me that <laughs> now i'm like you can't be telling me that your dog drank a shot of West Flutter and I've never had it. You know, like. I, I do want to take from that and let me tell you another story. I mean, it's no West for lettering, but I know a guy that happens to use Hunapu as marinade. Oh, my God. Exactly. You know what, though? Mad respect to him because yeah, that is probably <laughs> that is probably a great steak. Right, probably <laughs> that is probably a great <laughs> steak. I, I, I really want to do it myself. Everything in those flavors so would play that, very like, well. I can't, I can't do that. I That's so funny. That, but yeah, I know, I know we got to do well, that. He must know somebody. I have, uh, I've heard of things being done with some of those big flavorful beers, but not anything that's that prolific <laughs> one, of once, a big one day flavorful a year. beer. There was an ice cream um, company out of uh, somewhere in Tampa. They got their hands on a couple of Hunapu balls, and they made some limited ice cream That's really cool. Um, to to that'd be a good idea. It was, I was like, Make Hunapu ice cream. I, well, I always hear about it too late. I know of, uh, of somebody I used to work with. Well, I guess... No, Alien's back, so we work with Aileen again. That's awesome. Um, Hi, Aileen. Aileen. Hey, Aileen. <laughs> uh, Aileen, who uh, I worked with over at Altamont. Now she's working at the UCF store with me as well. Um, the best one. Oh. She, um, <laughs> <laughs> she uh, marinated steaks using uh, Ghostface Killer by Twisted Pine Brewing. I think I've heard the story. <laughs> uh, they were fantastic. Really? Uh, from what I've heard, I didn't get to try them, but she uh. marinated steaks with Ghostface Killer. Ghostface Killer, if you guys are not familiar with it, is is the self-proclaimed hottest beer in the world. It, I think that Stone, Crime, and Punishment maybe put a run for its money, but right. um, <laughs> Ghostface Killer is if you want to melt your face off and, and play a trick with somebody at a party, you make them drink one. Um, it is just crazy hot. Uh, I've been to that brewery up in, uh, in Colorado. They're in Boulder, Colorado. Yep. Fantastic brewery. Um, really fun place. Great people. The beers are good. They don't release a ton of new stuff, but uh -huh. they... they have quality. Good. They have quality in what they do release. Um, I went there specifically to get Ghostface Killer and bring it back with me, just because I wanted to bring it to parties and trick people. <laughs> um, it is. I, I genuinely like that beer. I'm one of the few people who does. <laughs> but yeah, I don't blame you. I'm not a she person. I'd, she I'd came across tricked. a bottle and and marinated steaks in it for a couple of days, and she said just the the pure pepper that comes out of that beer into that steak was mellowed out completely. And and I've heard of that being a thing now, marinating yeah. be beers or marinating pepper beers, yeah, chili beers, chili beers yeah, with steaks, steaks yeah. or marinating it's, any yeah. beer with a steak. And it, it's to me, it's why do you cook with wine but you don't cook with beer? Why is there a double standard in the world with that? Now I know what to do with my double barrel hoonapoo. There you just go. <laughs> double barrel hoonapoo. Just dump it in a plastic <laughs> bag and throw some steaks in it. He'll it come be, back in two weeks with steaks. Hey, it better, it better be a filet mignon. That's all I'm saying. Hey, guys, that's what I got. <laughs> you better not be doing, like, a uh, uh, top roast in there. <laughs> that, bottom round, I don't know. I'm just going to buy whatever's on sale. Like, one day, <laughs> or Aldi if I can. If they're still Aldi. I've seen Aldi. Aldi steak. Let's get some Aldi steak with some hunter poo on it. Marinate it up. Yeah, we'll cut it into some dog food and give it to our dog yeah, later because the dogs oh, like to that, drink. That would be they like to drink. They like <laughs> to drink the good the beers. Ultimate. We might Marinate as well, right? Dog food in it. I that, mean, that that puts you on a whole nother level if you're yeah. using hunter poo and Dark Lord that, and all that for dog, dog food. Jeez, West Bull Terran Twelve. Uh, that's that's absurd to me. Derek actually, speaking of Derek again, he actually we came across a a beer today that Derek got. Um, for passing his beer school test through World of Beer, and he got 100% on both of them. And the manager at the time gave him a bottle of Chimay Double, 
Um, oh, wow. And we just came across it today. This is now we've been open for five years. So this yeah. is a five-year-old Chimay double that I don't even think Derek knows still exists you, in the store. How do you store. forget that? <laughs> um, but it is, it is now here. And I, Derek, if you listen to this, we have it for you. So let's drink it together. <laughs> come on, by, Come on the let's show. Let's drink it together. Derek, if you're listening, we're using it for steak marinade. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and dog food. <laughs> dog food and steak marinade. Um, no, but it's funny, man. It's it's crazy. We actually just cracked open uh, an Oma Gang uh, quad for our five-year anniversary that we just had. It was a five-year-old bought the first the first uh, year that we were open. Five-year-old barrel, or not barrel aged, aged uh, quad from Oma Gang. Fantastic beer. We cracked really? it open. Very tart, which I didn't uh, expect uh, yeah. from a quad. But when you, I guess when you age it in a bottle for five years, you never know. But mm. you that, don't know what that flavor is going to come out like. I can't for the life of me can't remember it. Just had a bottle. Of it was a uh, bottle in '97. It was horrible. <laughs> it was I wonder horrible. why. <laughs> Did you find it under the uh, in the sea or something? No, uh, well, <laughs> no. He, he bought it. I don't know where he bought it. Well, as long as you it, age like, it right. Oh, uh, '97. Uh, uh, come on. Was it malt liquor? It wasn't malt <laughs> was liquor. Was it lightning or the hurricane? It, it was, uh, <laughs> that was something. That was, that was our bottle share theme. Uh, it has to be at least two years or older. <laughs> you bought like, it from 1997. Uh, I'm, like, I'm going I'm to bring you guys a, a nice uh, freaking Zima. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I could have bought a Zima on eBay, I would have uh, been there. I that. think you can. You know what's a really <laughs> interesting thing to do is if you want to turn any beer into a sour, just leave it in the trunk of your car for a year. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it'll taste fantastic. I had, I had a, Mike's Hard Lemonade. Sour. I had a, a heat-aged a heat aged Coors Light recently for trunk since aged. last yeah, since last. Uh, <laughs> Last Fourth of July, <laughs> you heard it it's like first. a year, a year and a half <laughs> old. Your beer, and uh, it was a sour, and it was, Ugh. it was not good. <laughs> Usually, you know, those heat age sours just never are. It's That's bad. so weird, right? Yeah, you think they don't age well in heat, man? I don't know what it, it is. It, you just, think with a trunk and it being, you know, no sun nicely. and sealed in there, you think it'd come out excellent, but, yeah, but you know, the world who is knows? Full of surprises. Yeah, right. So don't trunk age your beer. <laughs> don't trunk age your beer. Rule number one. Pro tip: ABT twelve. Tastes just like St. Bernard's. Uh, not as St. Bernard's. It's uh, West Westwood Does it really? Yeah. Does it? So I've had it then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I mean, ABT 12 was like one of those, you know, I don't know. St. Bernard's. It, you got to play. It's, 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 a, it's a proby beer. It's like, you know, that's one of the beers like, I'm going to dive into craft beer. I'm gonna start with that hardest and strongest. You can uh, you can plug St. Bernardus all day. They're one of those great breweries um, that if you just want to talk about a brewery that does fantastic beers and oh, does do them good. very well, um, they they for if you guys don't know about Trappist beers, Trappist obviously being uh, Trappist uh, monks make yeah. Trappist beers in their right. in their monasteries. Um, there's some other rules that go along with that, but basically they're supposed to be the best beers in the world. Um, St. Bernardus does most Trappist styles as well as Trappist breweries do, and they even slyly put the monk on the label just so you think it's a Trappist <laughs> beer, but it's not. But they are still fantastic, and all their beers are very, very good. Yeah. Have you had the barrel-aged uh, ABD 12? I have not. Me neither. No. That's a 30 <laughs> no. Nope. No. Nah. Have you guys? <laughs> no, I knew ABT I know, is no. good on its own. <laughs> I don't need yeah, to barrel-age it. Myself. Yeah, there's yeah. a little pro tip. ABT 12 tastes just like three-year-old Russell Turn. All right. A little and bit more licorice in the Westville turn, too. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> and widely available. Bang for your buck right there. So. Yeah, if Almost you're looking. Always available at World yeah, of yeah. It, it, we always have it on tap here. Um, you can get uh, ABC has them in four packs. Total Wine tends to have them. Yeah, if you're here. looking for another quality uh, quality Belgian-style brewery that, that'll be affordable and, and always available, um, Oma Gang out of New York is a fantastic brewery. But my, my personal, one of my favorite breweries um, – is Weyerbacher out of Pennsylvania. Uh, sleeper brewery. That is, that is a sleeper brewery. That yep. is one. Uh, I always tell my staff here when they're talking about breweries, obviously you have those main breweries that everybody already knows about and loves, like Cigar City, Terrapin, Dogfish, Dogfish Head, Sierra Oscar Nevada. Blues, yep. Stone, Sierra yep. Nevada, those breweries that always put out quality products. Um, I, I like to pick whatever my most outlandish outlier brewery is that does put out quality beer and talk about that instead because it's, it's a better educational right. experience for a customer. Um, if you guys have not had Weyerbacher beers, try them. They are fantastic. They do a most great pumpkin. Most of them age pumpkin. well, too. Um, their pumpkin's very spicy, great pumpkin ale. Uh, Weyerbacher Heresy, when it does come out, is a fantastic uh, barrel-aged imperial stout with vanilla. Mm. One of the best beers I've had, and it comes out every mm. year, and it's quality every year. And yeah. what I love about that brewery is they release 
they release only quality beers. And I, I put them up there with Southern Tier in that respect where oh, they don't God. they put out eight beers a year, but they're all great. And and I don't like uh, a lot of breweries that do put out 40, 50, 60 beers and 10 of them are fantastic and 20 of them are okay and 60 of them are not that good. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I get that you hit with a lot and that's cool, but I don't want to have to roll the dice when I bring a beer into my store and mm-hmm. wonder if it's going to be good. I yeah. think what happens a lot of times is, you know, you get yourself a brewery that comes up with a... We're ready. Whenever you get a chance to... Uh, you guys cracking now? Guys, you have a few minutes. we got to get a beer picked out. You don't want to go first, right? No. No, he's bringing the whale tonight. I'm bringing the whale. <laughs> the great white buffalo, as they say. <laughs> Bourbon County Backyard Rye. Ooh, Ooh like all right. Team. Oh, yes. That'll be real nice. Yes, but he's bringing nothing a like a rye. Crop and and know, nothing like know. a rye that just finishes nice and crisp and smooth with a lot right. of a lot of alcohol in it to go with oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But what I'm saying is, a lot of times you get these people that uh, come out, you know, they'll come out with a couple of really, really good beers. And then they're like, okay, you know what? We're good now. We're just going to, let's just we'll pump, pump them out, out. All, all kinds of stuff. Because people are like, oh, these guys are good. Yep. You know, I think that's, uh, I mean, Jay Wakefield, they had a couple good things. And now it just, I don't know. Now I'm not so much. I hear I hear the opposite of Jay Wakefield. I heard they're like the best brewery in South Florida. Uh, I guess. I mean, and when we all talked about our Florida breweries, they weren't on the list. So. They were on your guys' list? No, no. they were not. Oh. But they might be doing fantastic I mean, I stuff. Mean, they got some good beers. It's just, I mean, I've been there, kind of had a sour experience. I've never been them. there for the sake of time. I didn't name mine, so they, okay. uh, not, they wouldn't be in my top three, though. But they're, but, they're I mean, the top three. They do have good beer, but oh, I, I absolutely. think they're just, you know, they're trying to, they, they, they realize they have some good beers. Now they're like, oh, well, we're Cigar City now. You know, they, no. they think and you have to build, you are. have to build off of what you do well and continue doing it, you know? It's, uh, it's a distribution world, like I was saying earlier. Is, and yeah, when really you build... Is. When you build off of your core brands, if you become about your cores, mm-hmm. and then everything else goes to exactly. goes to crap, then it doesn't matter. Like um, three sons, I have, I have, I swear to God, there. I was sad I didn't mention that. That was certainly number one. They had the uh, the number one. It was a Neapolitan style ice uh, uh, beer. It was like Neapolitan flavored over Hoop Day. One of the best beers I've ever have had. Have you had Have you had Funky Buddha's Neapolitan Porter? It's it's good. I wouldn't say it's Three Sons good, but I would. say I liked it's, it. It's up there. But see, like you know, that's that's yeah. a brewery I want to get involved with and learn Three about. Sons? Yeah, because it's and it's, it's so one of those things though, that it's like exactly. But that's what I love about them already is that they make they it so, difficult so, yeah. to get their beer for a good reason because they want to continue doing it right and making sure it's quality. Um, yeah. I, I mean, why has Cigar City been on top of the Florida beer distribution world for so long? They, they, because they, their they, cores they, are they, fantastic. They, yeah. yeah. Because they they Oak have. Right because now. because <laughs> White Oak Age Highlight is a, a treatment of a core brand that is one of the best go to IPAs that you can get. No doubt. Cigar City is, did it right. They did. For a long they time. Florida, Florida, Florida. Now they're a little bit over their head. Now they're I just, think. Let's say, yeah, let's yeah. say. It says Cigar City on it, so it's going to be They right. got too big too fast. Let's just throw it out there because it's going to be good. For sake of argument, let's say that we all love white weeds, which, granted, I, I don't particularly like white weeds. But for sake of argument, Florida Cracker is a great white weed. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Invasion Absolutely. is a great pale ale with a little bit of pineapple note to it. They right. do great cores, and that's what makes them phenomenal. great is yeah, that no they doubt. can sit and sit back. And that's what makes most of the top uh, breweries in the craft breweries in the country happen is when you have a good core brand that you can put out consistently, then you can do the cool stuff on the side exactly. and build they're off of selling, it. They're selling um, their core regardless. They're making their right. money, and now everything's more or less Now it's their baby. Project. Now it's, it's like their here. baby, and they want to do like quality. It, you when you talk about the big, the biggest craft, beer, uh, craft breweries in the country, Sierra Nevada, number one, tops the list. Sierra Nevada has 80% of their sales from one of their beers, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. So they don't th- everything they, they put out, and this is yeah. where I, this is where my world comes in as, yeah. a, as a retailer and as a as a, a bar. Like I like. I know I know what what their the breweries are doing and what allows them to operate the way they do. Oscar Blues has seven, oh, 70 plus percent of their sales come from uh, Dale's Pale Ale. So everything else that they do, all the awesome beers they release, are based off the idea that it they can do that and they can take that chance and mm-hmm. make a quality beer and wait till it's right because they don't need to worry about what they're making off of it. It's their yeah. baby. When yeah. you have 
breweries that want to release the next big thing because they want to just get it out in the market and make money off it because it's it's this new awesome concept. Yeah. Those are the ones that don't be about the core. They don't they don't want to be about quality. They want to get money. Exactly. And that's and that's when the, the the rest of the quality of that line falls off. Um, I mean, all of the top all the top breweries, Sam Adams being one of them, all of their sales more or less are from Boston Lager. Every single one of the top breweries is releasing one or two core brands that are fantastic, and Cigar City has five that are all fantastic, and then they build off of it. Debatable. I think their seasonals are a lot better than their core brand. Who? Sam Sam Adams? Adams, Yeah. I don't don't like Boston Lager at all. Sam Adams was the king of... They were the king of (laughs) overhopping beers for a long time and making them out of balance, and now they've they've come back down to earth. Weren't they the, like... Before this whole craft thing really hit, weren't they the beginning? They were the first hop hopper hop heads. They, they were, the they were yeah. they're ready to go. Uh, uh, Dave is coming beer. back. Right. right. Here, Sample, Gentlemen, this is a 2012. 2012. Bourbon barrel aged with coffee added. Speedway stout. Okay. Out of California. Uh, Ailsmith Brewing. Ailsmith. Say that again, but say it loud enough for everybody this to hear. On. It is a 2012 uh-huh. bourbon barrel aged uh-huh. Speedway stout with coffee added. Holy Jeez. shit. <laughs> at, from Smith, out of California. Woo. Let me know what you guys think. Mike, your glasses. Let's so, so all look at it. And as you guys it. heard, uh, my glass is not with me, so I bet you would do for now. All right. All right, we'll see you next time when yes, you come sir. back whenever. <laughs> whenever you come back. <laughs> right. uh, now, the beer might be a little too cold, so get your sip initially, and then uh-huh. put your hands around the glass, warm it up. Warm up, but definitely get a sip Woo. initially and let me know what you think. Woo. That is barrel and booze, and I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. I like it, despite my face. <laughs> a, a little, a little, a little rough. A little it's, it's, it's. What is the percentage heavy. on it? I think that's a thirteen point nine. I was gonna say oh that's that's one that's over ten, yeah. but that's yeah. okay. We have a couple of eighteen and nineteen percenters tonight too. All right. Well, when we're done, <laughs> we're, when we're done with this, Mike, you're hanging out with us. You're, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. you're definitely getting me an Uber home, right? Uh, that's <laughs> what you're getting a little you need to be responsible, guys. See, yeah, see David, David's a class act. I want him on the show every other week. But this is. I mean, you'll say that about John next week when yeah. Decent's here. <laughs> yeah, Decent's a trip, man. It, heavy coffee notes, very syrupy, very boozy on the smell. Um, man, I wish there was a way that we can like put like a graphic up or something, but you, you can't. There's no way to describe. Motor oil motor pretty oil, much says yeah, it. <laughs> like, if you're into craft beer, you know exactly what we're talking about. But it's it's, it's definitely motor oil thick. There's like thick. there's like three styles of beer that you're gonna when you get very much into very the busy. craft beer world yeah. when you get to be in the at enthusiast level uh, there's like three styles that you're gonna be like okay if it's that style I know it's gonna be at least somewhat great and it's yeah. it's imperial stout <laughs> double IPA or yeah. any sour any sour and yeah. and that's where that's where you get to where you're like oh my god all right that's that's gonna be at least a quality offering yeah this is like imperial stout had a baby with motor oil and now it's like the thickest with added coffee and add, yeah, they, put co- they put a shot of espresso in it and Let now age. it's it and is I, it's um, very figgy too yeah. wow and that's i mean that's really so the, good it's really yeah well it's 13 wait 13.9 percent he said yeah and, and like again like with craft beer like we would never have the chance to get our hands on a beer like this at no, probably ever, unless we go physically go to the brewery, sit unless, on it. Unless, yeah, unless we happen to be traveling that particular day, they release this beer, and it's absurd because I, I happen to be. Well, and it you, almost tastes like whiskey. You hear those stories where people end up traveling and just ending up at the right place at the right time, and that has happened to me before. Uh, <laughs> I have been out in just the right place at the right time with craft beer, and I, uh, I was out in California when the brewery was putting out a bunch of their seasonal releases. Yeah. Um, I've been out there in uh, in Napa Valley when they're putting out some really good stuff out of Napa Smith, which uh, I've heard Napa them, Smith yeah. is great brewery in Napa Valley, and uh, one of their brewmasters is actually works with Mendocino as well. Have you've heard of Mendocino Brewing, both are great breweries. They do a lot of cool stuff. Um, Hopageddon from Napa Smith is is like one of the hoppiest IPAs in the world. It's really? 144 IBUs. So, Ugh. to put that in perspective, I think a Dogfish Head 60 Minute is like 70 IBUs. So, this yeah. is more than twice as hoppy. <laughs> I mean, with, with the IBU level, I mean, your tongue can only process a certain amount. Because I think I've had an over one, 
Shout out to Mosquito County Brewing and Matt. Matt gave me a, uh, I can't remember the style, but it was over 100 IBU. Literally couldn't taste it at all. Well, what you, and I'm assuming double IPA, right? Yeah. Okay, so what, and this is the big, this is actually a cool topic that I'm glad we got onto. A big, uh, a big misconception and part of what we've learned in beer school and from working at World of Beer is that one, IBUs directly relates to what you taste in bitterness, which is not always true. There's a lot of really, really bitter, hoppy IP, uh, IPAs that are in the 60s and IBUs, and then yep. there's a lot of big double IPAs that are over 100 IBUs that you don't taste a lot of hop profile at all. Right. Um, what you're what you're tasting in those beers is a big malt presence in double IPAs that mm-hmm. rounds out the sweet kind of finish because alcohol is essentially sugars that have that have turned into alcohol. I mean, right. um, sugars eat the yeast. Right. Uh, so anything that has a huge malt backbone and a mm-hmm. high ABV always is going to finish sweet no matter what. So a double IPA with 100 IBUs is going to taste bitter. It's going to smell floral. It's going to be in your face with hops. Yeah. But that finish is going to be smooth and sweet every time, and, and it's going to warm you up. Yeah. And that's what I love about double IPAs mm-hmm. is they do. They warm you up. They taste sweet at the finish, and they're very malty, even though there is a ton of hops in them. Yeah, even beers like uh, Heady Topper is a double IPA. Yeah, and it's And you will even great. know. If, if you didn't listen to the show or we, no one told you, you would have no idea it was an IPA because I hate IPAs personally. But double IPAs I can handle. And Heady right. Topper, you know, it has a balance of, a, you know, of a balanced beer. The IBUs are there, hops are there, but it's like malty and floral and tropical and pro- I think one of the top five best beers in America. Yeah, probably. Absolutely. I've had it a hard, handful of times, and it is really, really good. And it comes in a can, which is Way always better. better than bottle. Yep. So uh, I think we're going to take a quick break so I can chop this up later for editing. So uh, we'll be back. All right, and we're back after a very long break. We were enjoying the bottle share, me and Jeff. Yes, very much enjoying it. Lots of lots of crazy beers, lots of barley wines, and peanut butter IPAs all with a, at least <laughs> two years of age on them so yeah so like David said uh, earlier he this theme was two two years or more age so there's a lot of age beers somebody did bring in a 1997 beer which I heard was terrible I, you I can't imagine that unless it's designed to be aged that long uh, a beer that's a legal adult doesn't uh, uh, doesn't appeal to me too much <laughs> <laughs> so we were wrapping things up here in our first ever episode of Behind the Bar. Tune in next week. Jeff, you have anything to, to say? No, man. Thank you for having me. I, I can't wait for next week. It should be fun. Um, I'm excited about this. This is a really, uh, a really cool opportunity for us. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys out at World of Beer. Come in and, and see us. And uh, if, you're not, if you're just starting to get into the craft beer world, come out. And, uh, again, guarantee you'll have a good time. You'll get, you'll get some good craft beer, and you'll definitely have a good experience here. We'll make sure of that. So, so for the most part, we are going to try and record every Thursday. Mm-hmm. I think works for, we might have to change due to events. But for the most part, every Thursday, probably around 3 o'clock, 3, 30, 4 o'clock. So if you guys want to come by and sit and be a part of the show, Dave is coming back. Uh-oh, Uh-oh. more Uh-oh. beers. You have another crowd on Tuesday. Chocolate. Chocolate covered almond double nut. Chocolate covered cherry almond. Chocolate covered cherry almond double Bolita. nut. Belita. Belita. Got it. Okay. Thank you. It's just when you thought we were done. I know, right? <laughs> and now we got more beer to try. Cigar City one off from their Growler Tuesday. Smells and this pretty good. smells like it's got age on it too. Yeah. Maybe not age, but barrel I for smell, sure. I smell vanilla. Wow, that, how sweet is that? I get like a hazelnut. The smell? Taste. Oh yeah, you get. I get hazelnut, a lot of cherries. That's wild. It's smooth though for it, for it, for it being aged like that. It tastes like cocoa puffs with hazelnut <laughs> and cherries. If if Dr Pepper took the carbonated water out of it i think they'd be very yeah. kind of similar yeah very similar uh but anyway every thursday for the most part here at world Beer ucf come by hang out with jeff and cassie and darren and everybody else that works here who went through hell 
to graduate beer school to serve you guys good craft beer. And until then, thanks for watching or listening. <laughs>